Today we're going to be building the trickier parts of the Demon Dentist. On stage one, when you're doing the patient's right leg, you can also at the same time jump ahead a little bit and do the right, uh, the left leg as well at the same time as a mirror pair. This part here, part two, make sure you've got the, it's got a shorter groove and a longer groove, make sure you've got that inwards. Then apply the glue down but not into the hole. Over the peg and leave that about a one millimetre gap. Push it up and do the same with this leg. Stage two. When you're selecting this part, part number five, uh, it's slightly rounded. You need that rounded edge coming inwards to the centre of the leg. Put glue down the edge, but not into the hole. Fit this through there with no glue. And drop down and then just glue to the edge of that. Same with the patient's left leg. Line up with that peg. Oops. Drop down. Allow to dry. For the next stage, uh, gluing parts six, there are, just notice there's a slight angle on one side and you want that going to the centre of the leg. And again, you can glue both legs at the same time if you're doing them as a mirror pair. Glue on the edge and just line up the edge. We need to dry. Uh, the next stage then is just putting this fork over and lining up. Do the same for the left and right. And same for the other side. I often put a bit of glue on the end before I push it down in. Just wiggle it around and push down. And leave to dry. With stage four, I tend to do both sides at once as we have been doing. So just lift that leg off with that angle at the highest point. Same here. And then put the two washers on at the same time. It's a bit difficult to show in the instructions, so I'll just show you how you fit this on. You have the leg, everything pointing upwards, and this peg that has nothing on it is to go in there. Let it drop down, and then put that oval through there. Same on the other side. Lift this leg up, put that peg through, and then guide that peg through the hole and drop down. Right, so we're moving on a stage. We've fixed the outer upper thighs and lower legs on, and I'm just going to show you the best way of gluing these hips on. Put the glue on there and there. And you've got to line up that hole with the peg that you've put through. Tricky. And on the other side, again, line the hole up. And turn the whole assembly over. And pinch together. Try and get everything lined up neatly. And leave for a good 20 minutes to dry. So we're at the point where you've built the uh, chair section and just before you glue the body onto it, I turn it over and just sand around this lower edge. 
and wax it. It just helps later on for some parts that are going to glide past that. Then put the glue on these parts up to about that point. Turn the assembly over and glue in place and make sure you centre it up and leave to dry. In section 16 I do the arms slightly differently. I've we've glued these parts together, then I glue the two pegs in with plenty of glue like that. And then smear the glue round on the surface. It's very important that these pegs are very glued, very firmly glued in. We don't want them revolving, you'll see later on why. And then the next stage is putting the lower arms in. Just make sure you've sanded and waxed this area off very well because you want this once the peg's in to be able to just pivot up and down very easily. So do a trial run and make sure it's able to do that before you then put the peg in. Just a quick one to show you in section 19, just make sure you have the two holes in these two parts facing upwards uh, before you push the arms on. Uh, you don't glue anything at this stage, but uh, you should do this when you move the arms up and down. Okay. In section 20, um, use the part with the Timber Kits logo on and have that facing down. And then part 28, uh, it's not entirely clear which way around you have it. You have it so it's the same height as that part and glue it there. Section 21, I at this stage do something slightly differently to the instructions. I put the 3x46mm peg that comes out the bottom of the dentist drill in at this point. I just find it easier to locate later on. And that also, because this edge can catch on some of the parts again later on, I do round off the edge and wax it well just so that the parts glide past each other. In section 23 you will have made these two assemblies. Uh, I tend to make these right at the beginning of making the dentist or certainly a long way before you're going to use them to let them grow go really hard, the pegs inside. Also it says in section 25 to hook them in place uh, on the underside of the uh, patient. I don't because they just keep falling out because there's nothing to hold them in at this stage so I just put them to one side and use them later which I'll show you. Section 27, I'll just show you when you're doing the glue on this it's very important to only get it just on that thin edge there. You don't want to glue that arm. A little bit on there and then also if you bring these arms out of the way a little bit on that thin under edge you don't have to go the whole way along then you put it in place locating the instructions say those two pegs into those two slots Line, line them up with the hips, centralise there, and leave to dry. Section 34, this is where I slightly differ from the instructions. As it says at the top, it will give you a left-handed model if you do it the way the instructions are. So I actually put the handle shaft in from this loose side, thread the spacer on, Put on one of your waxed offset cams, then the other spacer with a bit of glue, then the 
central cam. Twist it as you go just to spread the glue. Next space up. And the next cam pointing in the opposite direction to the first offset cam. Then a bit of glue on here, not in that area, and on this edge, and bring the handle through there, line up that peg, and push together. Then, before the glue's dried, just you sometimes need to pull the handle out slightly because you want each cam to be directly above the cam followers below, so just check that's happening and then leave to dry. Section 44, when you're putting the platform on whose feet to rest, I don't put it in line with the bottom. You want them to lay flat, so lift the feet up so they lay flat and then slide it into place, which tends to be about 5 mil up, and then leave to dry. Section 50, we're now going to put these in place one at a time that we left out earlier. Press that down there and it'll, you'll see the leg kicks up. Hold it in place, lift, put this in that way and then turn. Turn it and locate it in a hole that's in that ply piece. It's quite tricky. There, and let it dangle down. Don't do the other side yet, we'll glue this and then we'll do the other side as a repeat. So I'm holding this in place with my finger on the inside so it doesn't drop out of the hole you've located. I put some glue inside that hole there. I tend to, because it speeds the process up, put a bob of super glue on that end and then bring them together and push that down. I then lay it on its side for a few seconds till the super glue takes, starts to take. And then what you need to do is you need to turn the handle until the cam, the round cam that's behind there, is in its lowest downward position. And then just let it dry for a little bit longer. When it's in its lowest down position and you're holding that peg. The leg should be up. Once it's taken, you should be able to very slowly stand that back up and very slowly turn, turn it round for you. Turn the handle and the leg should kick up. Look. And just keep adjusting that while the glue's still drying so you get the highest kick you can without it jamming by being too tight and then you repeat the same for this other side where you hang this in place hold it in place put glue on there and on the end and again just turn the handle till that leg kicks at a nice high level you usually need about a millimeter gap between the bottom of the cam and the bottom of the cam follower that it's turning against you don't want it too tight because it will bind and then just leave both to dry. It's often better to lay it on its side because the gravity often makes that slide down. Okay. Right, we're on to section 51 and 52 now. This is where I jump to 52 and I leave putting the patient's head in place because I find it easier to do it at the end. So we'll come back to that. Section 52 is the very important part of gluing, getting glue into these two holes. Uh, to make the arms come up and down. Now, if you've got a nice liquid super glue, it's by far the best way of doing this. Put glue inside that hole, a generous amount of super glue, then follow behind it with a little bit of the wood glue. Really push it in and just move that arm up and down to get that super glue to run around that arm peg. And turn the handle so that leg is in its highest position. Push the arm down so it's in its lowest. 
sometimes I weigh that down but that seems to be down okay and just leave that to dry if you've used super glue only half an hour but if you haven't used super glue I'd leave it a good couple of hours then repeat on the other side whereby you you have that leg raised instead of that leg and then they will work in opposition to each other and leave to dry for a good long time and then when you turn the handle both the legs and the two arms should go up and down So now we're putting the figure in place, we've got the glue underneath, the glue on the end of that peg which we did earlier to make it easier. Push down, the man in place, just make sure that's nice and vertical and leave to dry. At this point then you can glue either side, the lower jaw and the head, so there's a nice gap between and the two side pieces. And then when these have dried, you can turn the handle and the drill should vibrate up and down. And as you see in the instructions, you then take the arms off one at a time and put the glue just inside the shoulder holes, not against the body. You want it to rotate and push them back on. Turn the handle again and it should rotate up and down nicely. Just a couple of small points when you're getting near to the end. When you glue the hands on, glue them right on the outer edge and you might even need to pivot them slightly that the, the edge of the finger can sometimes catch with the bench. So just make sure when you're gluing that it isn't conflicting. And also if you get any slight catch as you turn the handle, um, you might need to just look up underneath and see if anything is catching as it goes up and down. There are several cams and things passing each other. You might need to get in there with sandpaper and wax and just make sure everything glides smoothly against it. And sometimes this piece here can catch as it goes up in that groove again. Just You have waxed and rounded that up already but you might need to do it some more. Just keep working on it until everything's gliding freely. And then it should look like this.